so good to have you here with me on a sparkling fall day in southern Spain. If I were to not look at the date, I would feel as though the summer is just around the corner, but alas, the date tells me differently and we are heading into the challenges of winter. But you're not here to hear about the weather conditions and I'm not here to waste your time. So let's talk about this weird image you're seeing on your screen. That, what you see, is a flower spike of my Neo Stylus Lou Sneery Blue. Not the classic Lou Sneery. This one has blue next to its name because this one is different. Mine just happens to be so different, it is actually weird. <laughs> and that is what this video is all about. My weirdest orchid. It is not just a video that I am airing, but it is hopefully the start of an orchid tag for many channels to get involved in. The subject being my weirdest orchid, which was something that occurred to me over the years since I've been documenting the strange ongoings with my Neo Stylus Blue here. And I thought to myself, self, Am I the only one that has an orchid in their collection that is weird? Maybe other growers have that one orchid that they are puzzled about. It behaves differently, has funky blooms that are just weird, a weird fragrance, or for whatever reason, it makes no sense, making it weird in their collection. This resulted in the idea of starting an orchid tag titled My Weirdest Orchid. I hope that this tag will make its rounds and that we will get to see many videos of funky orchids in which the grower shares why they chose this particular orchid as the candidate out of their entire collection. So that is why we're looking at this orchid, even though she's not in bloom yet. But she's definitely the weirdest orchid in my collection and here is why. But first of all, I need to clarify and I will explain why I've got three on the table right now. <laughs> Later on, I'll, I'll get to that. Including why I keep talking about this orchid. It, it's just, yeah, see how this works? <laughs> Even the video is weird. Anyway, so since I received this orchid in 2018, she has never bloomed for me correctly, starting out with weird spike growth. She starts out with normal growing spikes and then they deform and do the weirdest curly whirly things as they extend. Even good looking buds with no environmental influence will blast, while others will bloom out with blooms that have the most remarkable hologram effect of deep purple to light purple, depending on how the light reflects off of them. Her fragrance is the classic Neo Stylus Loose Neary fragrance of vanilla sugar infused with lemon powder. You can actually taste it if you inhale the fragrance, so maybe inhaling a fragrance is weird, but that is me being weird, not the orchid. <laughs> the next weird thing that happens is that the blooms are deformed. Petals are fused with sepals or something out of the bloom structure is missing completely. But we're not done yet. Early 2022, she did another weird thing and started to grow a growth with inner growth, which I had to release. And that weird crown is now progressing normally. Thank goodness for that. But you see, her foliage is tougher and stronger in comparison to my classic Neo Stylus Loose Neary. It has the texture and strength of Tulumnia leaves. Not that that in itself is the weirdest thing, but I'm mentioning that to give an understanding as to how the weird crown decided to pierce through such tough tissue and work its way sideways. <laughs> that certainly is weird considering that just growing up through the path of least resistance would be the normal thing to do. Nope. Let's just continue being weird and go through another leaf. <laughs> After severing the leaf and releasing the new leaf that was growing through, piercing through it, everything is now progressing normally, so we managed to get around that. And I have not seen that phenomenon on any other fans, <laughs> as a side note. Okay, so three orchids on the table, but maybe you can tell that I have two of the same orchid in different setup. And also I brought out my classic Neo Stylus to show off its perfect spike and for it to kind of hint at the blue that this is how it's done. <laughs> but I have two blues, one in a basket with just lava rock and one in lecker and self-watering. The reason for this was that after seeing the first blooms in 2018, I decided to check the rhizome of the blue and I cut off the main fan. Thankfully, there was no fossarium, which is something I was suspicious about. So, the orchid, from what I can tell by the rhizome, is clean. In 2020, I potted the fan up in Lekka and self-watering because I wanted to test and see if the orchid was not blooming correctly due to lack of hydration. 
seeing as one of the parents of this orchid is Rhynchostylus solestis, and back in those days I was struggling with Rhynchostylus species in my collection due to lack of humidity, I thought, well, self-watering will provide more water for it and I could test the water, so to speak, when that fan blooms. Turns out, <laughs> it bloomed deformed blooms as well. But I wasn't done yet. You know, orchid growers, we never give up. So my next plan of attack was to starve both of the pieces for a whole year of all fertilizer, all supplements, and all seaweed. Sometimes hormonal imbalances will cause weird bloom formations, and both orchids were strong, one with plenty of growth, the other had a single fan with good roots. I was not going to be taking any risks by depriving the pieces of all nutrients. Still no dice. The subsequent blooming in 2022 started with deformed spikes and then blooms were deformed as well. Okay, so after... <laughs> I hope you're still with me. <laughs> yeah, we are. It's a long game, the orchid hobby, so <laughs> I have to explain why this orchid is so weird in comparison to other orchids. So if, you, if you're scratching your head by now, then I have achieved my goal because, hello, my weirdest orchid, give this video a like. I would so appreciate it. <laughs> Even I have to go back and retrace all the steps of what I've done and tried with this orchid. So here we go. I'm not done yet. <laughs> because after having done all that experimenting through the past years, plus all the observing and documenting, I figured, okay, you are who you are. I love your color and you smell nice and went back to my regular fertilizing and supplement concentrations, including seaweed, throughout the entire season of 2022 and I have just accepted that this orchid is just weird and when I say this orchid I mean both pieces I just consider them as one they were both treated the same way where am I going with this <laughs> well if anything now I think that this particular orchid that I have of the blue variety has epigenetic variations that causes it to behave the way it does meaning one of those epigenetic mechanisms causes a clash with the DNA, which is a simple chemical modification that results in reduced activity or even inactivation of a certain gene. In layman's terms, so as not to get too sciency, <laughs> think of it this way. You have the same piece of music, but one artist plays it differently to the other, and that is the current conclusion I have come to with my blue. I can, however, attest to the fact that the piece in Lekka and Self-Watering is growing larger structures after it has been given all the good stuff and has grown two new fans in the two years since it was separated. Even though the one in the basket and Lava Rock has also grown well, the Lekka and Self-Watering clearly shows larger leaves for what it's worth. <laughs> but both are still weird and don't perform according to expectations. However, I have no plans of getting rid of them and time will tell if they will eventually snap out of their weird behavior and if not, Blue always keeps things interesting like, what are you gonna do next? Because <laughs> Blue is in spike on multiple fans again, this time prematurely, which is also weird. Seeing as this orchid normally starts growing its spikes starting December and blooms mid-January through February, <laughs> here we are and it's just coming to the end of October. Meanwhile, we had a weird summer, so other orchids are doing things prematurely as well, but now we can wait to see how these spikes progress and bloom out. And because it never gets boring with this orchid, <laughs> it's a keeper. The blue in Lekka and self-watering is also growing another spike. The two new fans are still too small to do so, but who knows? <laughs> Being as weird as it is, it may surprise us eventually. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. You may suggest that it's not getting enough light, and for that reason it's doing all this weird stuff. Well, I consider the orchid's location as one of the nomadic type. <laughs> the basket travels from east to west on the patio, depending on how hot it is and how much sun the orchid can take without burning the leaves. So the basket is always in bright shade, and the fan that is in self-watering resides on the east side of my patio throughout the growing season, behind a white curtain where it gets eight hours of the brightest shade imaginable, and then I raise the curtain when the sun moves behind the facade, after which it gets all the reflecting light of the white facade that the property comes with. 
So I doubt light is what is influencing it to behave this way. And on top of that, when it comes to pests, believe you me, I have been observing this orchid so, so much because of all the weird things it does. If I had seen any pest infestation beyond the occasional mealy bug here and there, that really means nothing in the grand scheme of things when it comes to orchid pests. I have had nothing else on this orchid that would pose a threat to it, making it do what it does. So because I've eliminated pests, I doubt very much that light is what is influencing it to behave this way. Now, after a whole year of treating it as if nothing to see here, it won't be long until we see what this one does next and what the spikes and blooms will look like. Trust me, I will keep you posted. <laughs> I still have some unfinished business for this video, so an orchid tag would not be an orchid tag without me tagging the first two channels that, hopefully, will have something weird in their collections that they want to share with us. And I am tagging Nature Nell and Fernanda Nacimento orchids and succulents. I hope that the two of you are up for having been tagged and so look forward to seeing your weirdest orchid. And then, even more hopeful that this tag will be a fun one to watch for everyone as it makes its rounds throughout the coming months. That is the plan. And as hopefully the months progress and this tag makes its rounds, if you want to check the progress of the particular tag, looking for videos, type in hashtag my weirdest orchid and eventually there should be many videos to watch if all goes well. <laughs> I really appreciate you watching my video from Jump or if you are back from the future <laughs> and you're watching my video after you may have found my video after the hashtag my weirdest orchid brought you here thank you as well for watching consider subscribing because oh boy it never gets boring on the patio and well <laughs> tensions are high when it comes to the winter months in the gross space <laughs> i'm laughing now i won't be then anyway thank you for your time have yourselves a fantastic day on one condition, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.